This VizCast will look at a problem involving a merry-go-round with some people jumping onto it. It's a complicated problem, so pause the video for a moment and read carefully through the question. Now that you've read through the question, you can see what's involved are two people, a boy and a girl, running towards a merry-go-round that is already rotating and jumping onto the merry-go-round. And importantly, what we're being asked to find is the angular speed after the children have jumped onto the merry-go-round. Let's begin by interpreting the problem. We're being asked for the final angular speed and we're given some information that involves some rotational inertia, some masses and some locations because we know these people are jumping on at the merry-go-round's rim so we know where they are. This problem looks quite a lot like a collision problem in linear mechanics except now of course it's rotating objects interacting. The rotating merry-go-round before the children jump on board and once the children jump on board they also start to rotate with the merry-go-round. As with many collision problems we might like to think about angular momentum and in particular is angular momentum conserved. Of course if we look at this the angular momentum of the merry-go-round itself won't be conserved because it's going to have some torque applied to it. When the children jump onto the rim they're going to exert a force on the merry-go-round and therefore that will apply a torque. The children themselves will have a torque applied because when they jump onto the merry-go-round there'll be a force acting upon them and therefore potentially a torque. However if we consider the system here that we analyze if the system here is going to be the merry-go-round plus the boy plus the girl then indeed this system has no net external torque on it the only torques will be internal to the system and then we can indeed say that we expect the angular momentum of the system to be conserved let's move on to the development stage as usual we'd like a diagram to help us understand what's physically going on. So here's our merry-go-round and we know it's going around with some angular velocity which will indicate there's some initial angular velocity. Uh, we know the radius of this merry-go-round that we're told um, and we're told that there's a boy running towards the center of the merry-go-round so let's indicate the boy here running towards the center of the merry-go-round and we're told there's a girl running tangentially to the rim in the direction that the merry-go-round is going. So indeed we can see there if this girl runs and lands on the rim there that's the direction the merry-go-round will be rotating so she's going to land on the rim in the same direction. And when they land we can think of them as staying located just at the rim where they land as implied by the question. When we calculate the angular momentum of the different components in this system we have a couple of ways we can do that. One way of writing the angular momentum as a vector is the cross product of the location and the momentum, the linear momentum. And that's a useful way when we have a point particle with a definite location and a momentum that we can calculate. An alternative way to do this is to say that it's the rotational inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. And that's a more useful form when we have an extended object that doesn't have a definite location but whose rotational inertia we can calculate or perhaps have already been given. So let's move on to the evaluation step in our solution. We should be able to write down that our initial should equal our final for angular momentum because they are indeed in a system where there's no net external torque. What's our initial angular momentum? Well, we have the boy running towards the center so he would have an angular momentum of his location crossed with his momentum and then we have the angular momentum of the girl running towards the merry-go-round that will be the cross product of her position with her momentum and then we have the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round multiplied by its angular velocity. Now this expression has the vector nature of the angular momentum expressly indicated. But these components, if you go and use your right hand rule to determine where they point, if they point anywhere at all, will actually point out of the page as this diagram is drawn. If you're not sure about that, you should go and practice your right hand rule for angular momentum. In fact, this particular component here, 
the angular momentum of the buoy as he's running towards the centre and lands on the edge, we can actually calculate quite straightforwardly. Because if we look at the r vector for the buoy, it points in that direction there as he lands on the end, and the p vector for the buoy, of course, will point towards the centre. Now the angle between those two vectors is 180 degrees, and therefore the cross product of those will involve the sine of 180 degrees, which will equal zero. And so the buoy, as he runs towards the centre of the merry-go-round, actually has zero angular momentum that he contributes. The girl, on the other hand, you can see that her radius vector is at right angles to her motion here. Her momentum vector would be in that direction. And so there, that will involve the sine of 90 degrees. In fact, that will just give us 1, and we'd actually have the radius will be the location of the girl. Um, her momentum will be the mass of the girl times the speed of the girl. And the sine of 90 degrees will be 1. So there, in fact, is her angular momentum plus the rotational inertia times the initial angular velocity of the merry-go-round. Now, what's the final angular momentum going to be here? The final angular momentum here is going to be one object moving around with one angular velocity. That's what the question tells us. So we need to calculate here what the final rotational inertia is multiplied by the final angular velocity. And indeed, that final angular velocity is what we're trying to calculate. So I could actually rearrange this equation now to make that final angular speed the subject of the formula. And I can see it's going to be the radius times mg times the speed of the girl plus the rotational inertia times omega i all divided by the final rotational inertia once the boy and the girl have landed on the rim of that. Now, most of these numbers we know, although this bottom line here, how would we calculate the final rotational inertia of the merry-go-round plus the children sitting on the rim? We can calculate what that final rotational inertia must be. It must be the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round plus it's got two masses sitting on its radius. So that will be the mass, for example, of the buoy multiplied by the square of its location from the axis that will be the radius squared. And the same thing for the girl, her mass times the location of her squared, which again, she's a radius away from the axis, that will be r squared. The only other quantity in this that we don't really know is the initial angular velocity. We certainly know it in terms of 11 revolutions per minute, but we need to do a unit conversion for that. And when we do a unit conversion, multiplying by 2 pi to take revolutions into radians, dividing by 60 to take per minute into per second, and we get a number there of 1.15 radians per second. So now we can do our final calculation here, putting all the numbers in. The radius is 1.3 meters times the mass of the girl, which was 32 kilograms, times the velocity of the girl, which was 3.7, plus the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round, which was 240, times the angular velocity initially, which was 1.15. And we're going to divide all of that by the final rotational inertia, which will be 240 for the merry-go-round, plus the mass of the buoy, 28 times the square of the radius, 1.3 squared, plus the mass of the girl, 32 times the square of the radius, again, 1.3 squared. Just to make enough room for us to write the answer, we'll scroll down for a minute. Putting all of those numbers into the calculator, we get a value here of 1.26 radians per second. And if you like, we can convert that again to compare it to our original quantity, 1.26 radians per second. We've got to divide by 2 pi to find out how many revolutions and multiply by 60 to go from per second to per minute. And we find we get a number there of 12 revolutions per minute. That's our final 
angular speed once the boy and the girl have jumped on.